let's start with the first one. There are many layers to your film, including the doors of perception by Aldous Huxley. Yeah. What was the specific inspiration for your journey to the door? It was a lot of things. I like that you touched on doors of perception already. Um, there was a book called the alchemist that was a, that was a, uh, really big inspiration. And then honestly, um, trying to tell the story of like, you know, the, the metaphor that we're making with the movie or that is intended, we're ten, attempting to make is that this door, this door to paradise is like, you know, this, this dream that you have some big goal that anyone watching might have, you know, including my own goal to be directing film all the time. Yeah. And so, you know, coming from a place where uh, it's not really looked at as like a, like a feasible thing, you know, at least where I grew up kind of, you know, do the, get the job in finance or business or do the safe yep, thing. Yep. So it's kind of a reinterpretation of my own journey of like, is this dream even possible? And then, you know, like the journey and the, the strife and struggle to like get there and the journey's not over, you know? And so that's really like the big influence Perfect. behind it is. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, since the story is a journey, how did you specifically put your characters on that path? Did you give yeah. your actors different motivations or were you trying to get an obsessive commonality to their character processes toward the door? They do, each one did have their own motivation. Like, so there's these different symbolisms going in. So for example, we've got, you know, we have Connor who um, has a, a lot of like, he's pretty much painted with the self-doubt right we've got this superior in the form of you know this head hunter woman um and she's represents more about the ego right so she's trying to uh protect people from the door right kind of there's a line in the movie around you know where you're just going to protect her her entire life and she you know she was keeping her daughter safe um and then we've got like the opportunists in the form of paul and michelle who are out in the middle of the desert who he runs into so they all have their own angle to getting there, but they all are definitely obsessing over like they want to get there and they each have their own method to, to achieving that. end. Very good. So you set the film in a dystopian condition and came up with the situations associated with it. Many of the stuff that is played out, the lack of electric power, shades of racism and the desperation of the pandemic are found in the film. What predictive element chills your blood as we sit here in 2021? When we're trying to introduce the iconography of this doorway that represents, you know, salvation, right? Um, it, it really became, um, how can we spoon feed this to them in a way that's most easily accessible in ways that they've seen already, but it's really not about the apocalypse as much as it's about trying to find this doorway. Right. Um, so to answer your second question, it's, it's, uh, you know, what really chills me to this day is, I think this idea of this kind of civil war. And I think we do see that in the movie as well in terms of, um, you know, the civil war of people that are on both sides of this really divisive line of the door's real or no, it's not, or, you know, this person is the leader and, right. the, you know, like, and so that really, that scares me because both sides really see it, that they're the right side and right. nobody wants to compromise on, their beliefs and i think that's just heading toward a really scary potential future that's not pretty that's pretty chilling my friend pretty chilling. yes <laughs> yeah. so are you a storyboard or shots list director when facing a day of shooting what specific goals are going to give you the most satisfaction yeah i would say definitely storyboard um storyboarding having the plan going in in terms of like what is this going, like, what is the experience on screen that the audience is going to have while we're shooting it is super important. Um, shot lists are great. And I, I, I still find that it's the, it's like seeing it as the audience while we're going in, I think is the, just my own method for, you know, achieving a, a cutability rather than like, let's get the master, then the tight, then the tight. Then, you know, like, <laughs> You yeah. know what I mean? It, yeah, it's just a little sterile, I think, that way. Well, and you know, that was, the Hitchcock, that was the Hitchcock technique. He would always yeah. draw it out and hated shooting the movie, but he loved yeah. drawing the form out. So, yeah. Since movies are a collaborative art, what point in the process from script to completion is most important for you in achieving that collaboration? Yeah. 
most important is is tough because it's easy to point to like you know without a without a solid script like you got nothing so that's important yeah or without you know without the storyboards that's you know if you don't have there's so many most important steps and (laughs) to answer the question i think the most important is like you can plan all you want and like as as i'm sure you well know like whenever you get on set and like you're about to roll camera like there's going to be a lot of things that you didn't plan on that like you've got to deal with and kind of make the creative decisions around yeah and so i find that like that's the most important is just having the trust in like the cast and crew in the moment to make decisions on the fly that are still going to fulfill on the intention of the scene that's you know so like it's it's being it's like having the plan and like not attached to the plan at all (laughs) that is great all right finally which film in the history of cinema would you like to take on as a redo not necessarily as as an improvement but as an intriguing exercise in placing it through your eye and experience and of course yeah I would say two movies. Right. One, I would love to. I would love to have a shot at Taxi Driver. Wow! I love the the dark. Just making it. I would just love to just do a reinterpretation. It's already a masterpiece, so it's not like there's any opportunity to. You know, it's not like I would be trying to do it better, but it would just be such a fun exercise to like right. take a stab. Um, and then another one that I, that I I. I grew up reading these Stephen King novels, uh, the Dark Tower series. I love the magical realism of it and just going to these different worlds and everything. And I, I don't know that, it, like, I would just love to, again, take my own shot. <laughs> that would be a situation where I think I could do it better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, I think both of those would be, would be awesome. And then, you know, you're learning about what's possible as you're watching the movie and you're just along for this beautiful ride. This is Patrick McDowell for HollywoodChicago.com, copyright 2021.